Welcome back. We're still working with vectors and logical expressions for uh, manipulating and finding out what's in those vectors, finding out what's in those vectors and also changing what's in those vectors. The first thing I'm going to mention as I started out, as I'm starting out, is I noticed that if you're following along in the book that I previously had uh, different values in y because I had not entered in uh, these changes to change the value of y. So I've run this and I can go ahead and just run it again if you want to see it. And that puts these values in here. So if you were looking at uh, the returns of true and, oops, not that one, true and false in x and y and y and x, then you would have actually seen, wait, something's a little bit different here. Oh, I didn't mean to change that. I should go ahead and run this one. And then uh, in the book, he ran this one, so you've ended up with two true and uh, three true. So then where we're picking up today is actually with match. And this is on page 39, if you're following along. And again, this is in the Quantitative Corpus Linguistics with R uh, by Stefan Gries. And it's the first edition. A new one has come out in 2016, or is coming out uh, shortly, I believe. So looking at match, uh, what match will return uh, for the two vectors in here is another vector that contains for each position where the first matches with the second. So uh, you can see I've done a few things in here since we left off, uh, but we'll just pick up uh, where we left off. So we want to know where x matches with y. So we'll look over here. Uh, where x matches with y, and if we want to know the position it matches, well, it doesn't. Uh, so what that would return is an a, and uh, from what I can see, an a is a, a logical constant indicating that a value is missing. And there's special ways that NA can be treated and searched for and uh, change, replace, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's not the NA character, ju uh, just a, a single value. So that's what would be placed in the vector that's being created here with match. Nine, what would be returned is the location in the, the second vector. So what would we, we would expect to be returned is three. And A, and A, and A, 6, oh wait, no, 2. So it would be 3, 2, and A, and A, and 1. So let's go ahead and run this. And there we have it, 3, and then 2, and 1, and all the rest are um, not available. So the second one, it takes this vector and tries to match it with this and tells us the location in this vector where we can find the match. So two, we would find the match in location nine. Five, we would find the location one, two, three, four, five, six. And nine, we would find in two. So let's run that. And there we have it. So notice the one here indicates that that is a, va a vector that is being run with match. So what you can see here, and I'm not going to uh, look them up right now, is uh, these are some additional ways to look at the vectors and return uh, some indication of what it, different ways, there's partial match, duplicated, uh, different ways that the characters are matched, and you can check those out yourself if you want to. You can see that I started to search the p-match here, and the duplicated, and the character match. Uh, but I'm not going to take the time to work through that right now. It would take me a little bit more time as well to try to figure that out and to play around with it, and I'd rather just keep on working through with these here. So the next one we're going to look at, oops, let me come up here, is the set diff. So we're going to look at where these two vectors are different. So what this is going to return is for the first vector, where it 
does not contain this one. And it will return a vector for that. So if we look at this, what I would expect is it does not contain this. So we take that out. So it's different if it takes this out, different if it takes this out, and different if it takes this out. So let's check that. And it's missing 9, 5, and 2. So it's giving us that vector that is different in this way. I guess that's one way to put it. It's probably other ways to put it. So the next one is looking at y, where it is different from x. And this one is a little trickier because this one is here, this one is in there, and this one is in there. So there will be nothing that is different. And if we go ahead and run it, that's what we see. And the numeric zero means that it's returning an array that is empty, that it's zero. And if we want to see that as an empty array, we can go ahead and assign this into a variable. And let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to call it Q. And let's run that. And we can see that it shows that up here in our values. Q is a numeric array and it's an empty array. There's nothing in there. There's not even one. All right, we're going to move on to intersect. So intersect is going to look at where they are uh, intersecting, where they are the same. So x and y, uh, the 9 and the 9 are the same, the 5 and the 5 are the same, the 2 and the 2. Uh, so I'm just going to point out that we're looking at the what's contained in the vector, not the positions. And there we've got it. And it, the order is in the order of the first vector. The 9 was found, the 5 was found, the 2 was found. And if we run this in the reverse order, so we're saying where does y intersect with x? So 2 does intersect, 5 does intersect, and 9 does intersect. It should be in the reverse order. And there we have it. The next thing that we're going to run is union x and y. So this is going to put them together, which I would expect to not actually look too different here because there's so much overlap. What appears to happen, though, is that it's looking, it's, okay, so it's going through the first one, and 10 is here. It's, it's combining them, so it's not going to duplicate the 9, 8, and 5. It's not, it's not going to duplicate it, and it's not going to duplicate it. So what we're going to end is just with an array that's the exact same as y, is x. And there we have it. So we're going to try this again and in the reverse order, and here's where it's going to show per, uh, perhaps a little bit more of the order of operations. So if it's doing a union with y and x, then it would, I would expect it to do 2, and it's checking here, so it's not going to duplicate 2, 5, and it's not going to duplicate 5, 9, and it's not going to duplicate 9, and now it does everything here that has not been duplicated, so 10, 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 1. Let's see. And that does seem to be how it put them together. Before we move on, I should mention that if you're looking closer at how that union is happening, don't count on me for that one. Uh, but if you do know, go ahead and tell me. All right, we're going to move on to unique. So it looks like the way that he's having us try this out is just playing by putting, creating new arrays, one, two, three, 
Again, two and three, four, three, four, and five. So some duplicates in here. We'll run it right away. And H, two, three, one, five, two, six, three, one, and two. We'll run this one also. Okay, we have it in there. So what we're going to look at is what is unique in G. And I would expect this to return anything that is not duplicated in there, meaning there's only one, there's a unique one. Oh, it's a little bit different than I was thinking. So it's just returning one of everything. There's not anything that, there's no duplicates in there. So there's at least one one, at least one two, and so on and so forth. So what we're gonna do for table, we can do table for G. So like it says it takes as an argument one or more vectors and provides the frequency of each type or combination. Well, let's see what happens. All right, so we have a table of G. There's nine elements in it. Let me look at this. So it appears that the table function tallies up how many of each unique one there is. So there's one one, there's two twos, three threes, only two fours, and only one five. It's not actually what I was expecting a table function to do. So now we are running it for two vectors. So I was taking a moment to look at what I would expect. And it seems that when you are doing table with two vectors, it's comparing when those two vectors are meeting up at the same position. So let's run it and look at what we get. So it looks like it's saying that in the same position there was never a one and a one. And if we look at G and H, there was never a one and a one in the same position. A two and a one, there was one occurrence of H having a two and G having a one. And if visually we just look over there, we can see that's right where it was. Uh, and there was no occurrence of these. And we can look through and see where there were other combinations. So if there were some reason where we wanted to know where one vector had certain combinations in the same positions with others, then this is what, uh, that's what this table would tell us. He's also telling us that there's a prop table. So I'm just going to search for it a moment and see if it, what the uh, arguments are. Looks like it just takes the table. Well, uh, let's try it out. So we have prop table. And then we could put in the table G and H. And what he's explaining is that this would give us percentages. Okay, so rather than just occurrences, this is percentages. Because there were, I think, nine elements. Uh, that would make sense of why it would be just a little bit less than, or a little bit more than 10%. Uh, 